So hi guys, we're gonna look at the <clears throat> the kinematics of circular motion. Okay, kinematics of circular motion. Yes, kinematics has not gone away. Um, we're just going to apply it to situations where things are traveling in circles. Um, so if we give an example of the Texas Motor Speedway, the, uh, the NASCAR drivers go around uh, traveling about 200 miles per hour. Um, and then we need to know like what's happening with their acceleration if, as they're entering a corner. Is the car accelerating? Okay, so as I said earlier, that an object that's in uniform circular motion, if it's motion in a circle constant radius at a constant speed. So the idea is that, and I'll draw a picture here, I'm going to make this make it large. Um, if something swung around a circle like this, and forgive my uh, circle here, um, this is the velocity at, at one point. And then as it swings around, Okay, the velocity is going this way at the second point. So as you notice, the velocities are headed off in different directions, okay, completely different directions. But the direction of the velocity is always changing, but the distance from the center, the radius, is the same. And so the time it takes to travel around the circle stays the same as well. So what I want you to do is imagine that I cut this string here at this point in space. This object right here swinging around the circle, whether it's a planet or something else, would go off in that direction forever and ever and ever. Um, so the direction of the velocity is actually perpendicular to the radius of the circle. So at any point, the velocity direction is perpendicular to the radius. So we'll keep that in mind as we start doing some of these problems, uh, that that velocity is perpendicular to the radius. So we know that the velocity is headed off perpendicular to the radius. Um, here's, the, here's the radius. Uh, but how do we know like which direction the string is pulling, okay, or gravity, if you will. Uh, the string is actually pulling towards the center. So in this situation, the string is pulling this way. In this situation, the string is pulling this way. So we're going to call that the acceleration of the string. So the string is applying a force toward the center. So there must be an acceleration toward the center of the circle. And we can relate that to when Newton was sitting next to the apple tree and he saw the moon and he said to himself, there's got to be some force applying uh, to the moon from the earth that pulls the earth towards the, pulls the moon towards the earth. But then there's also that velocity which keeps it in orbit. So when we're looking at this acceleration, we can actually come up with a formula. Uh, this acceleration is called the uh, centripetal. Acceleration. And is always directed toward the center. Okay, as the word the name says, centripetal center, center seeking, and so we can give a formula. Um, its magnitude is given by the velocity squared over the radius, where r is the radius of the circle, v is the uh, that's that uniform circular motion, the velocity that we had found earlier uh, in the lecture. So. This is A is V squared over R, 
And again, you should be able to solve for different renditions of this. Okay, you should be able to get the radius. You should be able to get the velocity. So let me do that for you right now. Let's solve for velocity first. So this is the first one. Uh, so velocity squared is equal to acceleration times the radius. Okay, whereas we take the square root of that, uh, velocity is the square root of the acceleration times the radius. Okay, so that's the second rendition in solving for velocity. Now we'll look at radius. Okay, let's, uh, let's do that over here. Velocity squared is um, a r. Let's solve for the radius. Divide by a. Okay, and then the radius is v squared over a. Okay, so in solving for uh, the circle, this is the third rendition of that acceleration formula. So we studied the kinematics, and, um, and we actually studied a little bit of dynamics in the last section. So there's also a dynamic when it comes to circular motion. Okay, and we remember dynamics talks about the forces involved uh, with uh, objects, so forces. The, um, for an object to be in uniform circular motion, there must be a force acting on it. So here's our picture again. Try to draw it a little bit uh, better. Okay, we know that if it's accelerating at this point, this way, that there must be a force acting in that direction as well. So we're going to give you a formula that, give, that relates the force and the acceleration. Uh, and we know already that the force is equal to the mass times the acceleration. So acceleration we just defined in the last, uh, last minute or so, is uh, v squared over r. So if I clean this up a little bit, the force involved in pulling something in is mv squared over r. Okay, and in this case, you'll also have to look and solve for um, mass, velocity, and radius. Okay, and um, I'm going to do that for you right now. Okay, so let's solve for F equals mv squared over r. Let's solve for uh, mass first. So we're r. Radius times the frequency is mv squared. Let's solve for m. Divide by v squared on both sides. I'm going to clean this up for you guys. Frequency, um, force equals Yeah, I'll just switch this around. Okay, so here's our second rendition of that formula. Mass is equal to the radius times the force over velocity squared. So that's the second rendition. Okay, let's look at the, uh, the third rendition. Okay, let's solve for V. Okay, divide through by m. V squared is r is uh, 
radius times the force over mass. Okay, there's the third rendition of the formula. Okay, where we're looking at solving for velocity. The third one I'll put on the on the next slide here. Okay, now we're solving for radius. Okay, and this is number four. Radius is the mass times velocity squared over the force. You'll have to use all of these in solving for problems in the dynamics of circular motion. So if you've ever been driving in your, uh, in your car, your parent's car, you'll notice that if you like go down into a dip, you feel it in your stomach. Um, well, that feeling is actually part of what we're talking about here in circular motion because um, let's say um, we had a road that kind of dipped like this and then back up. Um, this dip actually is part of a larger circle um, with a radius. And um, the car, if we draw the car, you know, if it's down here, um, actually, let's make it closer to the bottom. So if it's down here, Okay, it's going to feel uh, an apparent weight change uh, based on the fact that you are now in circular motion when you're going down um, that dip. So let's say we have a car that's traveling at a velocity of 20 meters per second. Um, and then the mass uh, of, the, of the driver, we'll say, mass of the driver is uh, 60 kilograms. Okay, and then the radius of the dip, that's this. So we'll call that, also we'll call that this, is um, 80, we'll say 80 meters. Um, we want to know what the, the weight, the apparent weight of the driver is uh, right here. Because we know that something happens where you feel that in your stomach when you go down the hill and you reach the bottom of the hill, you feel that. A weight change. So we want to know what that apparent weight is. So what I would do is draw a free body diagram and indicate the direction of the acceleration. Okay, so um, I've got my, my units here. I've got a diagram labeled here. Okay, and at this point, okay, I've got mass times gravity. I am accelerating actually this way, and there's also a uh, normal force pushing up in this direction. So they're all parallel with each, they're all in line with each other. So I'm not figuring out any angles, I'm just looking at a straight line here. Um, and then, like, if I were to look at uh, the axes, okay, the dotted lines would be the axes. So we've got weight, we've got, um, and then we've got the normal force, okay, here. Okay, and so we know that force is mass times acceleration. Okay, so we're going to apply that to what we're, we have for forces. So what we've got for forces in here are the mass times gravity and then the normal force. Okay, so we've got this. Uh, normal force minus mg. Okay, that's what this is all about. Equals mv squared over r because that's uh, v squared over r is the acceleration in a circular uh, problem. 
So if I just, if I'm solving for the normal force, the force that you feel on your seat pushing back up, okay, I'm going to bring that over here. Um, normal force equals mg plus mv squared over r. Okay, so um, what I've got here is the normal force pushing back up on the seat is going to be your apparent weight, okay, because that's what you're feeling pushing back up against the seat. Okay, so in solving for that, these masses are the same. So I can take this, normal force is M times G plus V squared over R. Okay. So in solving for that N, normal force is mass times G uh, plus V squared over R. Okay, I can come up with an apparent weight because that's what I feel on my um, my bottom end when I'm in the car going down um, a, a curved path like that. So the mass is 60 kilograms. Okay, and then multiplied by the gravity. plus the velocity squared over the 80. Okay, so in solving for this, the normal force is equivalent to 888 newtons. Okay, um, and that's what you feel on the bottom of your seat. Now, normally, it would just be the, no, the weight that you'd feel if you're just driving in a straight line. So, um, in this case, what I've noticed is that they took this gravity number and they used the absolute value of it. So, we will we'll continue to do that with this dynamic section. We'll use the absolute value of gravity um, in solving for this. So the apparent weight is 888 newtons because it has to equal the normal force. Now our normal weight is mg, just to give you an idea, 60 times negative 9.8 Is, uh, normal weight is 588 newtons okay down okay and then um, you can see there's a quite a difference there there's about 300 newtons of force difference okay